Hey Blender Bob here. So I was supposed to show you the shockwave video that I promised you because I got my 1000 likes and uh, I thought well I need to reply to all the comments I got about the last clip because when I posted it my phone kept buzzing all the time non-stop. Bzz, 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 bzz. I got so many comments it became crazy. So I will address a lot of the comments that were done on uh, on the previous clip. Um, some of you guys said, uh, why don't you just send this to the developers? Well, I did this before. The thing is that there's an internal Blender policy that says that you cannot send screen grabs or videos from other software, okay? Because they don't want to copy what's been done in other software and they don't want to get in trouble legally. And it happened before. So I, I, I did a clip before. I sent it to the developer. I said, hey, this is a clip just for you guys about blah, 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 blah. And the reply was just, can you please redo your clip and remove all references to Maya, which was the point of the clip. So I cannot do this. Then some people said, did you try right click select? Well, right click select is an ocean of suggestions and it works by votes. The more votes you get, the more likely the developers will take a look at it and do it. Uh, the thing is that if I propose something that nobody knows about, or, you know, never thought about this concept or whatever, maybe it will just go like, who knows about, who cares, or I don't need this, or I don't know about this, and I don't care. So it will get lost into the ocean of suggestions. But I know for a fact that some developers are watching Blender Bob. I know because when I did the Udim clips, about three days later, there was a list on the on the developer website that said all the changes that they need to do on the Udemy. Well, some of the changes, and most of them were based on the clip I just did a few days ago. So I know they are watching, and this is the best way for me to transmit the information. And because it's my clip on my private YouTube uh, channel, well, if I want to show Maya, if I want to show Blender, if I want to show Clarice, if I want to, if I want to show Nuke, I will do whatever I want. So this way. I can, I can, you know, I can transmit all the information that I want without having to go through the Blender Institute rules. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start. I will only, uh, I will not do all of them. Come, some of, some of them nobody commented. Uh, I will do it only for the things that I kind of disagree with you guys, or I find another way, or whatever. The, the most uh, not controversial, but the ones that had the most uh, comments on. Okay, so I will skip some of them. All right, here we go. So somebody told me that once you have created a curve, you can go into edit mode and then you will have a tool to draw a curve. The problem with that is that you don't decide where the edit points are going to be. And you also need to get rid of the original curve. With Bezier Utilities, it works exactly like in Adobe Illustrator, where you can really precisely decide where you want your point and then stretch the handles. And as I mentioned before, as you can see here, you have a lot of different options that you can do to create the perfect curve. And it also comes with a lot of tools here, well, the utilities, so you can intersect, split curve, join curves, uh, align to face, and all these things that you can do. For aligning the vertices, somebody suggested to use loop tools. So you select your point and you go into G stretch. So yeah, it worked in that situation, but it will not work in this one because it's going to make a straight line between these two points here. So if I go G stretch, I get this line instead of getting something horizontal. And these won't help either. Now my solution just does it bang automatically in one shot and then I just align. Another solution is to use Machine Tool 3, which will create a pie menu that will do the same thing as what I did. It is free, link is in the description. You can apparently also do this with Mira tools, but I didn't try it and I don't have time to try all the add-ons on the planet. But thank you for the suggestion. So about 3000 people also told me that I could use S for scale and then Y for the Y axis and then zero to flatten them, which is what I explained in the previous clip this is what I want to avoid. I don't want to have to do this because you're not done yet. Okay, after this, they're flattened, but then you still have to go J for move, Y again, and then you have to turn on the snap, and then you have to move where you want it, and then you turn off the snap. I want to avoid all these steps. Also in the previous clip, I was talking about snaps. You can use Control Shift Tab to pop up this menu to change which snap that you want, but it doesn't turn it on. It just changes which snap you want to use. You still have to turn it on. Or maybe I'm just doing it wrong. I don't really care at this point because I prefer to use my method where I just turn it on and off as I press a button. There is a way, by the way, if you want to make your own hotkey without using Prime Menu Editor to get a, a, a hotkey that's only when you press. Uh, I will not explain it here. I will put it in the description. Somebody wrote it for me. I use Prime Menu Editor. It's just much easier. So I told you I could do this in my end one step. Well, this is how it is. Are you ready? Are you ready? 
Yeah, that's it. One single click. About using four views, a few people told me, well, why don't you just split your screens? Well, take a good look. Very cluttered interface, very clean interface. If you do want to keep this setup, you don't want to redo it every time, you, you can just go to Add Workspace Layout and double click to rename it. So about the equivalent of half the population of China told me to group my texture and then I can use it in different shaders and it's gonna work as I wanted. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so I got my noise texture here. I want to make a group with it. Well, if I right click, the group doesn't even appear. You get ungroup and edit group, but you don't have group. I don't know why. So you either use the hotkey or you go in group, make group. Now you have your group. So we'll go back up. This is my group. I will just rename it noise to make sure that it's the right one. Okay, now I will copy this group. I will go into my other shader and I will paste it. And if you look at the finger here, you can see that it's being used two times. Okay, so now I connect it and I make some changes and uh, it only works on one. Obviously, there's something I don't get here. Okay, I'm doing something wrong and I'm sure tons of you will tell me again. No, 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 it's because you forgot this and that. So, okay, let's try to figure out how that works because it doesn't work for me. So to go back to the link texture stuff, uh, some people thought when I was showing how it works in Maya that uh, in the hyper shade, you would get all your shaders at the same time. So if you have hundreds of shaders, it would be impossible to work with. That's not the case. This is how it works. I can, for example, select one shader and say, I want to graph this one. I only want to see all these two. I click on it and I see only these two shaders. If I want to add these two more, I click there and then I see all four of them. I can go per object. I can select this object and say, show me the shader for this object. If I want to reuse a texture, I can just drag it in there and connect it to whatever I want. You can also create tabs. So if you want to use always the same shaders or the same layout of the shaders, then I can say, okay, this, these two shaders are going to be in this tab. This one is this one here. I want to create another one and I want the shader for this object in there. So you have a lot of latitude like this. So why the extra steps? Why do I need to group something to be able to copy it as an instance somewhere? Why make, why make it so hard? Why not keeping it simple? This is how it's done in Nuke. I select my grade node and I go alternate K and I get a clone. You can see there's a little line connecting them together so I know which grade is connected to what. And in case you want to turn off the option to see the links between the two things, you still have a C that tells you that it's a clone. And now that they are connected, you can see if I change one of them, it changes both of them. Okay, uh, at one point I talked about uh, being able to override shaders per object, per layer. Somebody told me use the library override. Uh, there's a little problem with that. In 2.92, you had this option here where you could say add library override. So you could do some overrides on the shaders and stuff, but it never worked really well and you would reopen this file and uh, it wouldn't work anymore. And all you did was lost. And uh, in 3.0, well, it's gone. It's not there anymore, probably because it wasn't working well and they preferred to just remove it. About half of the planet told me that I should use just a knife tool instead of the bisect tool. That's the same thing, right? Not exactly. Let me show you why. With the knife tool, if I want to be aligned with this cube here, I can only eyeball it. So I will just press here. Okay, let's start from here. Press shift and then I can cut my sphere, right? Now I know why you cannot use shift to snap on angles with the bisect tool. That's because you need to select your polygons first and then you invoke the bisect tool. So I will go here and I go bisect and now I can really align exactly where I want it and I can do it and I need to press control to snap. Another thing I like about the bisect tool is that you can always adjust it after you do your cut. So I do my cut and here you get this manipulator that I can move and I can really adjust it to where I want it. Another big advantage of the bisect is that you can delete the outer or the inner polygons that you cut. So bisect and you can see here it deleted all these polygons that were selected that I don't want. So that's why you need the shift button to select the polygons, then you cut, press shift, you cut, press shift, you cut, press shift, you cut, and that's why you need to use control instead to snap. It's a bit inconsistent, maybe the knife tool should also use control to snap at different angles. And I use this a lot to clean up LiDAR scans, and that's the advantage here of being able to select what you want to cut first so that you don't have to do it on the entire geometry, otherwise it's too long. Now in this case I cut on the wrong side, so what I can do instead, instead of dragging from up to down, I can drag from down to up and then I will cut. I will remove the part that I don't want. 
and then I keep going. And this is a very efficient way to clean up extra polygons. And the fact that you select the polygons before you cut them, it's much faster. And now I just need to finish the cleanup, remove all this stuff that's outside the camera view. So I just eliminated over 600,000 polys. And that's why I prefer to use the bisect tool. Somebody told me I can just expand the little triangles here and see the data blocks if they're all called cube02. That means they're all instances. Yeah, I know that. But I'm not gonna start opening all these things just to see if it's an instance or not. What about the little C like you had in, uh, in Nuke? You know, something like this, a little sign that tells you, hey, this is an instance. A lot of you guys told me that instead of using random, I should use random per island in the geometry node instead. So let's try it. So I'll connect it here. And paradam, yeah, it works. But don't rejoice so fast because this will not work in the texture view like this. And also it will only work in cycles. It will not work in EV. So now you feel we have a solution, right? Well, at least for cycles. Well, not really. It works on spheres, but let's try it on cars. I want all the cars to have different colors. So random per colors and... Net, 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 net. Yeah, it doesn't work because they have separate islands. Another thing here, look, I'm at 24 million polygons only for 25 cars. And that's because arrays create geometry, not instances. Why? If I turn off the array modifiers, I'm at 964,000. I would still have the same amount of polygons and I would not use more memory if there were instances. What if I wanted to fill up an entire parking lot? That would be impossible. So we have a partial solution. It doesn't work in every situation, but at least we got something. A lot of people also told me that I could use Geonode to do this. It works in Geonode because Geonode will make instances and will not take, will not take more memory and will, you know, make everything lighter. Uh, but not everybody is comfortable using Geonode, okay? It's not for everybody. And this is something that should be like out of the box. It should be very simple. And you should have an option when you do array modifiers I want instances instead of objects. It's, it should be right there. I don't understand why it's not there. It's, I'm sure I'm not the first one asking for this. That's like impossible. So there must be a technical reason. Well, I don't know, but you know, I think this is something that really needs to be fixed. About random colors, I talked about it actually how to get a better random uh, result in my clip about uh, dirt maps. A link is right there on top. Um, this is what I mean by random colors. Now it doesn't look like you only have like five colors, you have a lot of different ones. Yeah, you could achieve this in Blender, but it's just, again, a little bit more complicated. I said it would be nice if we could sculpt in only one direction, you know, like in the Y axis or the Z axis. Well, it turns out it's hidden right here in the mirror stuff. You can just lock the axis that you want. Yeah, so this one, my bad. Okay, this one was also very stupid on my part. I wanted to be able to look from a spotlight point of view. You just use control numpad zero and yeah, you will see it. Or you can go into camera and just click on set active object as camera and then yeah, you see it. But you have to be careful because this will also become your rendering camera. I use an add-on called my big button to switch cameras. It's very, very cool. And I never use this uh, control numpad zero. So that's why I didn't know about it. Okay, this one too, my bad. Okay, it was, I shouldn't have put this. It's, it was just so easy. It's just me not knowing the software. Okay, all right, so I screwed up. For the VDBs, the explosions, I did mention that I didn't know much about it, how it works, and I asked for your help, and you guys gave me a lot of different solutions, which are really, really awesome. This one was the best one. Look at this explosion. It looks absolutely gorgeous. We are at Houdini level here. I will share this setup and other setups also that people suggested because some have more options and everything. It's going to be in my uh, Blender share folder on Dropbox. Link is in the description. So you know what? I thought if this works in Blender, maybe I could do the same setup in Claris. And that's exactly what I did. And look at this. It looks absolutely awesome. It's so beautiful. And look at the speed it renders. It's mind blowing. It is so fast. Thank you everybody so much for the help on this one. I think only two people told me that you can use control to disconnect from the output of the node. So okay, that's cool, but it doesn't fix all the problems because in this case here, I got three noodles connected to the same node and if I press control, I disconnect all three of them. What if I only want to do this one? And it's the same issue if I got all three nodes connected like this, I cannot just remove one of them because it's going to stretch a new noodle. 
And that's why I think the noodle should be handled like any other software that uses nodes. You just click on the noodle near where it connects and then you can disconnect it. What happened here? My point is in the center and everything moves around. I don't know what's going on. Oh, uh, anyways. Another issue of having to click on the dot to disconnect something is when it's too small like this, it's really hard to pick the right one. You really need to zoom in to have more precision. Now it would be much easier if we could do like any other software with nodes, just select the end of the noodle and disconnect it. So that's it. And you know, that made me realize something that most of the comments were about stuff in Blender already. You guys know Blender and you comment on it. But when I talk about stuff that is not part of Blender, and if you're not a Maya user or Nuke or whatever, you don't know about these features and people don't really comment on them. For example, the reference editor is a mind-blowing thing. This is something that's so useful, but I get just a few comments about it. It's so important. So that's why I was talking, that's what I was talking about when I said about right-click select, I could write about something. If you guys don't know about it, you just like, I don't know, I never had it before, maybe I don't really need it. But once you tried it, once you experiment, experimented it, you realize that this is something that you miss a lot, like the, uh, the hypershade to be able to deal with multiple shaders at the same time in the same window and all these little tabs that you can have multiple views of your shaders and everything. These are very, very, very cool and important stuff. And this is the stuff I miss in Blender now. Okay, some of you are probably thinking, hey, if you're not happy, go back to Maya. No, 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 no. I've been there. I mean, there's good stuff in Maya. There's good stuff, good stuff in Blender. There's good stuff in 3ds Max in Modo, everybody has their own stuff, but I chose Blender and now I just want Blender to get better and better. So that's why I'm doing these clips. All right, so next week or maybe the week after, I'm gonna do the Shockwave stuff. Now you have to be patient with me because these clips takes a long time to do and I have a full-time job. I can only do this on weekends and sometimes on weekends, I'm kind of tired and I need to take a break. All right, so I will say bye-bye and my cat will say bye-bye too. All right, say goodbye. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. You don't look at the camera. You don't look too happy. Why are you like this? Why are you like this? Huh? All right, bye.